Building downtown. Building downtown. Building downtown. Hey, this is the Bill in Downtown. We're back doing what we do best, and that is covering battle rap, specifically the KOTD Grand Prix, which continues Sunday, September 27th, 4 p.m. live on Twitch. That's 4 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget to follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at the Building DT. Don't forget to follow and subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm your host, Jason Kelly. You can follow me at J Kelly MMA. I'm joined as usual by Krill Kasatsky and Amy Barton. Follow Krill at Apostle Raps and Amy at Ames Bell. Now, uh, real quick, we want to say thank you to the, the increase in listeners and subscribers. We see you. That does not go unnoticed. We really appreciate it and hope you keep tuning in and, and bring your friends. And you get rewarded for that. We have a special guest tonight. He is an essential figure in the history of battle rap. He's on everyone's Mount Rushmore for sure. He's the founder of Grind Time. He's also the captain of the South Division from the KOT Grand Prix. If you don't know who I'm talking about yet, that's right. We got d Williams in the house tonight. How's it going, d I'm doing good. Life is good. great. And nice. um, I'm ready for this Grand Prix tournament. I'm excited. Perfect, perfect. I know you and your soldiers are ready to represent the South this Sunday. I uh, appreciate you taking some time out yeah. to talk to us. Uh, my co-host Krill here is itching. He's been itching since Sunday to talk to someone. He wants to, he wants to know how this judging is going to change in this next event. So Krill, I'll bounce it over to you right away. Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah, I was just, um, uh, obviously, last weekend uh, gave a lot of controversy, right? So the internet, everybody's booming and talking about it. I mean, I think Frack did good on that. But uh, um, what are you gonna do? What are you? What? What? Are you, what? What changes are you gonna bring? Or if any, are you going to to the judging system? Right? Is it gonna be the same sh- printout sheet that uh, uh, Organic presented to everybody, or are you doing some sort of changes to it? Um, yeah. Well, we have the same sheet where you guys see the uh, ten nine, ten eight, ten seven scoring, but um, which I'll get into in a second. But the biggest thing is um, we're now having two judges in the building two judges calling in uh, via webcam. And then, of course, that fifth judge is still going to stay. You guys, the audience, the crowd. Um, oh, so so the way some the of the judges get the experience is, of the viewer, right? That's nice. That's a good... Uh... Yeah, exactly. So, um, like you guys, I know you guys have the uh, background in MMA. And uh, so you guys will understand that um, we're doing the judging kind of like a boxing system where, you know, you score every round, mm-hmm. uh, like 10, nine, 10, eight, how it will work is, um, if rapper a has a nice round rapper B kind of one ups them has a better round. You would score that round like a 10, nine, uh, 10, eight would, re- would be reserved for clear wins, body bag round, something crazy, like frack pulling out the paper. If you thought that's what separated, you know what I'm saying? Two MCs, yeah, yeah, like yeah, something yeah, crazy yeah. happened, you would score that round a 10, eight. And uh, the lowest score you can get in a round is a seven, and that's reserved for a choke. And uh, if you guys look at what Organic put out, um, we kind of differenti- differentiate between a slip-up, a stumble, and a choke. Uh, slip-ups don't count against you. If you say the wrong word real quick, but you get it right back in a second, we won't hold it against you. But if you a stumble, it's classified as a choke that's less than seven seconds. And a choke is, you know, a choke as we all know it would be if you go more than seven seconds for getting I like the detail on that. that I, like, case, I like that you guys gave yeah. that a lot of thought. I like the detail on that. Yeah, it was a lot of arguing about that, about like, well, what if it's a slip-up? Like, what if someone does the point and you just say the wrong word real quick? And we're like, yeah, we got to break that down. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, if you choke, you get a seven and the highest. Um, so, wait, can I interrupt and in ask one quick question, though? Like with, yeah, with RX, that was not like seven seconds. She did stumble and kind of choke. So like, where does that fall on the mm-hmm. spectrum? Um, that would she'd probably be the deducted one point for for a stumble in that case. Um, okay. Choking, well, sorry. like it, I, I mean, you know, you know what's funny about it is that since there's so much money on the line, you know, you could say a choke could really be like three seconds. We kind of wanted to give people a chance, so. You know, that's the gray area, but you just can't choke your whole round away. You can't choke your whole round away and then say something crazy at the end and still win. That's completely unfair. So we just wanted to avoid situations like that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, yeah, there's no – yeah, if you catch if you catch a 10-7 in the first and then uh-huh. like, you, you, run, you catch the 7, you're pretty much screwed. Mm-hmm. Like, if you go 10 now, you're 27, 28, 27 still at the end, right? We have to come back. Yeah, I believe, so you I gotta fall that, apart. I believe back, you though, have right? to win. You would have to have 
you would have to win the next two rounds like 10 8 10 8 yeah i guess if you if you got 10 8 what right. a god what a yeah. battle that would be eh? to see somebody take a 10 7 in the first and come back and catch and get two 10 8s to win there's the possibility that i thought about though that's yeah. that's that's what's crazy about it right the detail i like that that's what i'm saying from from the from the choking to all of this to this point system yeah. that's pretty good that's pretty good i i'm very I i'm it. really surprised the stumble last week happened so wait so yeah, and, so and break so, down Break yeah. break down for us, Derek, uh, because you're. I mean, I think anybody who's like super into this has watched Organic at every turn since he doesn't go live very mm-hmm. often. Explain this, but you know, for the rest of everybody, explain the, you know, uh, the crowd's a bigger part of the judging, and then you have the Twitch oh, people, yeah. you know, and, and and there's the, yeah. you know, you know, you okay, just, you know. yeah, yeah, I got you. So uh, <laughs> or, Organic, what he did was he released judging scorecard. And, um, you know, you saw a percentage under each judge's uh, name next to the battle that they judge, and then they had an overall uh, score. So how that would work, for instance, is let's say with active versus caustic, I don't remember what the exact number was, but let's say 55% of people thought caustic won. If that judge voted for caustic in that battle, he'd receive an audience score or a fan score of 55%. So that's right? less so the judge build the credibility, right? <clears throat> Exactly. You build credibility with the fans. You know what I mean? And even though, you know, I don't think the fans are right, the way they call every every battle, for the most part, I think they get it right. You know what I mean? Because there's a whole bunch of different types of people voting for home. And if the majority of them go with some with somebody, I think more times than not, they got it right. Um, so, yeah, so the way it's going to work is all the divisions are going to have different judges. And I think a bunch of people were confused on that. So, like, my, my judges, who I can't tell you who they are yet, but they're incredibly well prepped. They'll be good to go. And I think we did an amazing job of just getting on the same page with them and making the battle feel comfortable with them for my specific division. Um, they're going to judge. They're gonna, their crowd scores are going to be released. And it's going to happen for every division. And the judges are going to get a chance to move on to round two and later rounds, depending on what their crowd score was. So I think all, anybody, if we do have another bad judge, you know, they'll kind of weed themselves out. And I don't really expect us to have that many egregious decisions. But, you know, if this thing is a work in progress, we kind of took a leap of faith trying to make this thing happen. So we're just trying to do it the best we can. And I think it's just going to improve every single week. So, yeah, you will see the best judges by the very end. And, you know, nobody should complain about them because they're based off of the audience's scores. So. I love the week QOTD faced all of this with the uh, the, uh, the the explanation that Organic gave and the professionalism they approached it with, you know what I mean? And I think at the end mm-hmm. of the day, everybody came out a winner here because Frax is definitely not hurting because of that loss, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, the, oh, yeah, the system... Frax's life. That's Hell what I'm yeah. saying. And the system the system is working itself out, you know what I mean? The bugs are being worked out. So I think everybody benefited from that. It was a moment that, was, that needed to happen, you know? Exactly. And I will say, uh, I was thinking about what if Frack um, had won the battle regular. I just don't think he would have got as much coverage. People would have blogged about it. It would have been exciting that he beat Disaster. But the way everyone got behind him, and now they're kind of pushing for him to be a star. I mean, I saw people, uh, you know, battle rap fans don't always support the music. I saw people saying, good morning, I'm posting Frack's music video just because Team Frack. No <laughs> shit. You know no shit. <laughs> yes, yes. love is crazy. Yeah. He's got a cult following now, man. Eh? Uh, so I saw uh, Math yeah, coming so. out. Math Hoffa to show some support on the boat with that video, yelling out <laughs> "Frack Hoffa, Frack Hoffa." Yeah, yeah you know what's funny? He went from like two thousand to seven thousand Twitter followers in like twenty four hours. Wow. Frack. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Like I, crazy. We, we talked a little bit about how it's hard to like not respond to things, right? And in some in right. some cases you can or or should, and in a lot of other cases it's not even worth your time, but. I got to say right. that, like, in this instance, I'm on Team Frack. And, and you mentioned earlier that you thought, you know, in your personal opinion, that Frack did win. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think everybody on this show also felt the same way. Um, right. But I got to yeah. be honest, man. Like, I, I loved how he handled it night of. I loved how he handled it the day after. And when he, and I'm, again, I'm not shitting on him. I thought that was, that was a performance of a lifetime for him and I oh, love yeah. the sign that he's getting but it did kind of bum me out I guess we'll say that he was like so humble so humble so humble I'm so thankful I'm so grateful this is the best, whatever and then was like 
let me flip that script now that these judges have put out videos and get all high and mighty. And I don't mean that you shouldn't be all high and, mi- high and mighty. You had the performance of a lifetime. Right. But the reason that so many people are behind you is because you were the underdog that did the thing. And so, like, don't right. don't respond to all these judges and be like, oh, but bro, like, stop. Just stop. Let it, like, don't even respond. That's better for you. I felt like. That was like, it really we, bothered me. Like, I was like, shut the fuck up, Frack. You're riding the wave. Is this his first wave of stardom, though, right? You know, you know, though, you know right? funny? If you... If, if you know Frack and you read it in Frack's voice, it, it kind of reads kind of funny. And I think that <laughs> even, I, 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 imagine being Frack and sitting at home and being completely cool with everything, getting a million tweets. And then all of a sudden you see people say, your second round wasn't lyrical. You didn't have anything besides the paper. I'd probably get mad too, honestly. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I get why he did it. I get why he did it. I just was like, come on, man. You were riding that wave so hard. Don't stop now. I can't lie, though. I wanted to see Frag get mad and push his ass there and be like, no, nah, fuck that. I won. I would have been highly entertained. You but it didn't happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Oh, you know what? Look, I, I have an unrelated question about the rosters before we move on. But do you feel like, and, and this is like a completely random question, but like, do you feel like there are, or not even do you feel like, I know that you know there are multiple different Diz is, depending on who he's battling, you know, and, and I've said for as long as I can remember, um, there are some Diz instances I, I can't stand to watch, like Diz versus Oxy, I'll watch that Diz 20 times in a row, like I'm, I'm here for right. it, right? But, like, if you're the Diz that's doing the Megatron, they, like, you're the Diz from Body. Like, I'm not here for that. Kind of thing. <laughs> I, I, I just, and I'm, I'm also not a Lifetime Diz fan. So, like, maybe unpopular opinion here. But, like, as somebody who has worked with so many people and seen so many events and put on so many, and all these things, I'm not asking your mm. relationship with Diz, but, like, professionally speaking, which Diz do you feel is the most effective? Um, they, uh, probably like like the cannabis Diz. I feel like you you have disaster when he's comfortable and he kind of jokes and freestyles more. Mm-hmm. Then you have disaster when he cares so much that he shows up, doesn't stumble once, and puts his whole <coughs> life into it. And I think that's what you saw against cannabis. Like everything he did was so on point. And I think like that version of disaster would be incredibly difficult for anyone to beat. Um, but yeah, I mean. I just think as a performer, it's hard to get at that level. But the funny thing about Diz and, like, love him or hate him is that he plays the heel so well. Like, I think he doesn't mind playing the bad guy role. Like, especially on this side of things, King of the Dot, like, there aren't aren't too many bad guys. You know what I mean? So I think it kind of plays into the entertainment of, you know, like, like, like he, I I think. He created that image for himself. He made Frack a hero. Yeah, and Frack wouldn't be a hero if Diz, if disaster wasn't so aggressive and mean and bullyish, you know. Well, yeah. that's one of the things that separates him from so many other battle rappers. Yeah, whether you like him or not. Right, right. You know, so, but but that being said, um, not we're not going to talk about Diz for three hours here. I want to ask you this: <laughs> since we're talking about battlers, we've talked about Cassidy, we've talked about Diz, we've talked about Frack, we've talked about everybody else. I want to get back to right. since we're here to talk about the Grand Prix. Uh, you know, we're talking about the South Division, right? And, th- and that's where you're at. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> obviously, like, not to take away from anybody else on your roster and all the guys that are actually going to be there on Sunday, but, right. you know, there are a lot of people that people would go, why isn't whoever there, right? And, like, for me, like, my mm-hmm. first, like, one second after watching this video, I'm like, no, Ness? What the fuck, right. man? And then, of course, like he said, no, man, I got other shit going on. And that's cool. So, I, you know, like, obviously, we don't expect you to, like, divulge the reasoning. Like, if there is reasons that you know. But, like, there have to be people that were the bigger names. And it, it, it doesn't have to be all bigger names for Grand P. But, but there have right. to be other people that people expected to be in an event like this that either couldn't make it, didn't want to. Like, whatever the reason. The reason doesn't matter. Um, but can you shed some light on who else? was talked to that is not actually going to be there? Yeah, I can. And like you said, I'm not going to say the reason, but we can just say that all these people had other things going on in their life to where they couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, there's no hard feelings either way. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll see him in the next one. But uh, 
BK is somebody that we really wanted in it. Of course, Ness. But Ness, Ness said why he couldn't do it. Um, we reached out to Myverse, Gaddis, Danger Zone, um, and just a bunch of other people that I probably can't remember right now. But, like, I will tell you the one thing about this tournament is we reached out to every single person who could probably be reached out to that we know our fan favorites that they would want to see in something like this. But I will also say that I think things – probably worked out the best way because I would rather have somebody hungry in it that's going to put their all into it because they know this might be their last or only opportunity as opposed to seeing somebody you know that's that everyone already knows mm -hmm. they get a big look every time a battle comes around and they just be less excited about it not saying that any of those people I named are like that but I know all the people that we have in the division are like incredibly hungry and they're looking at it like this is my shot to reach the next level which I think create greater competition so I am happy for that is there somebody if you can say uh, is there somebody literally anybody any division not just the south any one mm -hmm. battler that you would go mm -hmm. god damn it if this one person could have been on this shit that would have been dope as fuck like who would that be because there's a couple people but i have to name one person there's one i person mean you can name a few but who, who comes to mind first For, who comes to mind first you can give us a list honestly i think big k comes to mind first because okay. i think that the <coughs> self division is one of the only like they have a fan favorite of who the fans want to win but then self division is probably the only division without like a super mega star with multiple million view battles in it and um i would have liked to see big k slide into that role but like i said like i think things worked out pretty good and i think we'll we'll make for some really good battles but uh of course i want to say like hollow and shit like that like hollow oh, Pat yeah. Day, you know <laughs> yeah. but but as far as far as you know what was actually possible, I would have loved to see Big K. Hey, uh, Direct, you've been uh, you know league owner, the head of things, had to to be the face of organizations. So, and I know you don't want to see anything bad right. happen with anything you're involved in. But is there a little part right. of you because organic someone that has to go in here and take this on the chin, do the video thing? Is there a little part of you that says, "Fuck, I'm glad I don't have to do that this time." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's funny? You know what's funny about that? It seems natural, but I've been part of so many controversial situations and had to take heat for shit that, like, I kind of know how to do it now, you know? So, mm -hmm. really, I'm more sad if Organic has to take heat for something that, like, I know Kid I know he didn't want it to go that way or he didn't specifically have his hand on it. So, at this point, now we're more likely to kind of jump in and be like, man, it was all of us, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like, even though the frat conversation – was really, uh, I mean, the frack um, judgment was really controversial. I think it worked out beautifully for frack. You know, he yeah, obviously frack, you frack's to right in the on, wave of that but, one. Yeah, and um, you know, there's been discussions behind the scene of like who frack's next opponent's gonna be, how his career is gonna be moving on, and he has so many opportunities. And I think this tournament is gonna just birth a lot of stars. So that's one positive you can take away from it. But like going back to your question about organic like you know like i'll step up and i'll ride with them i feel like we're all in here together on this one and um you know this is for like we don't have any bad intentions with this you know so you know, if I, I gotta stick up for them whenever i can i'll do it i gotta say too i understand that the fan community is loud and sometimes fickle um oftentimes right. fickle <laughs> but um but I, I was a little surprised to see, only because I hadn't seen other fans or people online or on Reddit or really anywhere myself, um, and I don't include TalkBack because that's a whole different place, but um, right, really right. shitting on organic. And so I found it really interesting and, and depressing that he had to say, or he felt he had to say so many times, like, I'm going to take responsibility even if it's not my fault, but like fuck all y'all that think that I'm trying to fuck anybody or set anything up like that's disrespectful as fuck and it would be but I didn't see anybody saying that so that that happens that easily is crazy to me like what I even saw people saying yeah, oh avocado think... was like not having white people win lush had a thing going to rig it like there are all these people just saying all this shit because they're mad and I feel like if you're organic <laughs> yeah. you don't have to go yeah it's my responsibility to those people fuck those people <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, you know what it is. At, at, 
to a certain degree, yeah, it, it, we want to be like, fuck them. But at the same time, we used to be fans, too. So, I mean, we still are fans, you know, but we used to be in that position where, you know, we were watching a company do something and wish we had a voice. So I think when we see a negative comment, sometimes our natural reaction is to kind of like talk back to the person and like let them know that it's not like that. Because I think now in 2020, we have this new wave where all these companies have a voice where um, the average person can reach out to them on social media. And sometimes it's cool to hear something back. Like I've been in a a bunch of positions where people are like, fuck direct, he's a dickhead. When I see him, I'm slapping him. (laughs) And then like, I just said something to them. And it quickly diffused everything. And they're like, oh, man, I was just upset. You know what I mean? So I think I think having the ability to type something whenever you feel it and actually thinking about it and approaching someone are two very different things. So I like I personally don't get offended by that stuff. But sometimes it is like when, when you know you have good intentions and somebody's trying to drag your name through the mud, sometimes it's hard not to respond, especially when. You know, one of these guys can create a blog and then all of a sudden it has mm-hmm. 20,000 views when you wake up in the morning. You know what I mean? So I, I definitely understand the need to respond, but I don't think you have to all the time. But being that that was the first event, we all felt necess- we all felt it necessary to no, jump up I, and I, something. I, think, I also, yeah. also think he handled it very well. The response was uh, the, the informative and it was constructive. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it, yeah. it, it, I think it was needed at that point, right? And uh, now, now here and there, you are going to upgrade the system somewhat from your angle, you know what I mean? And it's going to evolve and evolve and evolve. It's only, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know what I mean? And like we said already, Frack, yeah. only, Frack only benefited from that loss too, right? So everything sort of worked yeah. out, right? Mm. Yeah, I think Frack, um, I was trying to think to myself today, now if Frack won, would it, ha- it would have a lot of buzz because it would be like, okay, he beat disaster. This is big news. People would have been talking about it. But this thing has been dragging on for days and days, and then you got the judges jumping up, doing interviews and stuff like that. It's been kind of interesting, even though like I personally thought Frack won. It's been kind of interesting to see this whole thing unfold. Like there was a I saw people with a lot of followers, a couple celebrities jumping there, Frack. So I don't think those people would have been as loud had he just won regularly. You know. Mm-hmm. So looking at the other divisions, uh, Jack, who are some of the? I mean, these are all top tier guys and then you get the guys who are getting a chance to shine now in each of the divisions there's some of that sprinkled in who are some of the guys that you think are front runners for the other divisions um i mean it's it's weird because you have people who i think are are highly skilled and they've mm-hmm. gotten super slept on so for instance like in my division like a lot is a right like yep no matter no matter how popular he is, like I know what he's capable of, you know, when there's something like this on the line. So I'm expecting a lot out of him. Um, I think like another example is in that New York division, you have Head Ice. You know what I'm saying? His yep. name is huge. Celebrities know him. You know what I mean? He has battles with bunches and bunch of views. But we're expecting him and Ty Law to actually be a good battle because we think Ty Law is really talented. You know, mm-hmm. and he hasn't really had a battle of this magnitude where so many people are going to be watching at once, especially in a live situation. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, like, man, like that Marv one versus Gage battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like a like I feel like that's just an excellent matchup. Like as soon as we came up with that one, everybody was like, "Oh my god, I can't wait to see that one." <laughs> so like, ready for that. You'll, yeah. you'll notice. You'll notice that with a lot of these matchups, like we were so excited putting them together, and um, like like an, another one that I think people see and they might not get because Rich Dollars has never been on um, King of the Dot before, but I think he matches up so well energy wise with Jay Murder. I think that's going to be a good one too. Mm-hmm. So, well, how yeah. uh, how involved were you with the the matchmaking? Um, they came to me with. MCs that they wanted to be in the division and some people that they had already talked to. But of course, you know, shit happens. Mm -hmm. Like out of all those names that I named, like some people just couldn't do it. So I kind of had to, you know, get my hands dirty and, um, you know, really call a bunch of people from my division. Um, Yeah, I I almost, I want to say like four or five people in the division were handpicked by me. Okay. Um, so it was every division like that, to your knowledge, or was that just like they were really like, "Yes, Derek, please help." No, well, 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 well some of them because like I said, there was a lot of time constraints on this. 
So some of the divisions, like, they they just had contacted three or four rappers immediately who said yes. So it was kind of a little easy to fill in those blanks. But, um, like, West Coast was easy because, like, almost everybody said yeah, you know. Um, North was a little bit of – but yeah, I, I think whoever you see being the representative for that division probably put the most into making those matchups work. And then we all helped whenever we could fill in a blank. How long was the process of this getting set up? Like, how far back did Organic reach out to you? It was like three weeks ago. That's it? It was like three. Yeah, it was like three weeks ago. It was like, <laughs> hey, maybe three and a half. Three and a half weeks ago, it was like, hey, hey um, I'm doing this thing with Twitch. You want to be a part of it? Kind of broke it down to me. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Especially, you know, the way battle rap is going right now. Uh, it's, you know, you got the URL caffeine deal. There's a lot of big business when we're being made. Twitch is such a huge partner to have in this space. Massive. And the fact that I knew it was a tournament, like I love judging. I love the controversy of tournaments. I feel like it's way more exciting. It's way more stuff to talk about. And then you get matchups that you would never get mm-hmm. in just regular battle rap. So, well, so those wait, two can things, you shed some light on yeah. why three weeks? Because he, he, he's already said that he'd been talking to Twitch for the better part of a year, a year and a half. I mean, did this just right. kind of like perfect storm of fuckery happen with like, hey, it's COVID and then caffeine and caffeine's kind of cool, but a lot of people don't like it. And we have this niche that we might be able to fit in and actually steal away from somebody that already figured it out. Like what, three weeks? If he's been talking to Twitch for a year, how did that happen? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying that's when I got brought in. Um, I don't I know you, all the details of exactly how long he's been talking to them, but like he, I've heard the same thing that he's been talking to them for about a year, but he had COVID. What can you do with COVID? And I think that's, I think they wanted to make something happen for 2020. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, hopefully the partnership continues. They seem really content with what happened the first week, but, um, I think it was just wanting to make something happen in 2020 COVID happening in the middle. And then, like, you know, when we finally got some light, things started open, opening back up. That conversation was had, like, hey, are we still going to do this? And mm-hmm. uh, I know Twitch just gave the green light. And we felt like with the team that we had and all, all the relationships we had in Battle Rap, we could pull it off really fast. Yeah, that's but awesome. It was, it's, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a ton of work. But, like, yeah, it's been about three and a half weeks since I've been on. Wow. Board. That is and, crazy. Uh, yeah. I was expecting, like, six months. <laughs> Holy shit! You no, guys are and good like at I this, said, eh? organic's probably organic's probably been working on it and trying to work work a deal way longer than that. But yeah, yeah, he we all came together and got it done. What was it like shit. trying to secure a venue with COVID and everything going on? Um, I, I actually weren't. I actually wasn't in charge of the venue. I think organic team did a really good job of hitting me up and saying, "Hey, hit the venue." Oh, so that's all right. <laughs> Where, what are you guys doing? Because they led last week seemed to be like a was some sort of a warehouse with a bait door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know what's funny is that um, my venue kind of looks like that one. I think they're looking for uniformity <laughs> in the tournament, and so they did a really good job of finding a place that I've never even seen. I've been to a bunch of venues out here I've never even seen before that looks just like the first one. But not even uniformity. That's some straight bunker vibes, which is kind of dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love this look. I feel like sometimes, like, sometimes, you know, you got to jump out there, do something creative. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But I think this is that they hit the nail on the head uh, with the venue look vibe for this one. It looks underground, like you said, a bunker. So, yeah. Oh, wow. It is underground? Like it's in a basement? No, no, no. It's, 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 it's some no, sort of no, where... it's more like a, oh, more I like a warehouse. Sick. Oh, I thought you were no, saying, saying the... it looks underground. It looks oh, underground. oh, I thought you were saying it actually is underground. I was saying, what the fuck? What kind of armory is this? Oh, no. no it's, 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 I should have just it's... lied and said that. It, was, it would have sounded cool. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's battle rap. It's bricks, right? It's some sort of like basement vibe, right? So it's, it's, it's the right setting. It's, I agree. Right. So do you have to have uh, security permits in place, just like a regular event when you have fans at it? Or is it different? Or do you, are you unsure? Uh, I mean, it's 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 a little different because there's not going to be that many people there. Mm-hmm. You see about as many people at mine as the West Coast one. Yeah. And um, these, and I, I believe this warehouse is privately owned, so it's not you know we don't have to jump around a bunch of city limits and stuff like that. Shit, a bunch that's of paperwork all. to be able to pull this off. Yeah. 
And as organic that you know, or do you have any idea of how it's going to work moving forward? Like when the, the divisions start to, to battle against each other, are they going to be using the same venues? Yeah. Or, yeah? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest oh. with you. Um, I think I have some clarity on that within the next week or so. Um, and it's probably something the team is going to have to come together and talk about. I will say that we've been doing a really good job of, um, you know, it's been me, Poison Pen, Organic, Gully, uh, J Pro, and Lush One really figuring everything out together as a team. So we're probably going to have a talk sometime soon about, you know, how we want the venue to look for the next one. So I yeah, can't and- tell you now. But okay. yeah, I mean, it might end up being a surprise too. You know, oh. we talked about a lot of crazy stuff. So might be underground. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> So here's what we need then, Derek. We need to just have you on every week as you get information. <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, it's funny. I could definitely, I could definitely come on again. You know what I mean? It, it, it probably, man. I've been doing so much work around this thing. I don't know if it can be for, uh, you know, three hours or anything like that. So I can come and check in with you guys. Do a whole Joe Rogan show, three and a half hours long. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that shit is long as hell, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like Krill. Sometimes we get shows going and we're getting into an hour and 20 minutes. He's like, we got to cut this, man. We're chewing it up. We're chewing it up. And like, Rogan does like three hours. He's like, fuck Rogan. That shit's too long. He's got <laughs> to be nice, sweet, and informative, man. It's, you know what I mean? No point of stretching right. it out. Yeah. 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 He, he's a fan of the grand time battles because you guys actually had like, uh, you know, good time limits on your rounds, not Soul Con disaster time limits, which was fucking ridiculous. Uh-huh. Um, Speaking right. of time limits, are the are the rounds the length of rounds going to change in this as time goes on, like as you get to the the finals um, and stuff? No, it, 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 um, it's right now. It's two minutes apiece. Yeah, and um, I think we're going to stick to that unless you know we get special requests from the battlers or something like that, and the team wants to come together and change it. But for right now, it's it's two minutes. And I honestly, I honestly think that's good. Because, <laughs> Sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No. <laughs> I, know, I know it's definitely with fifty thousand dollars on the line. I don't want nobody going to limit it against me. So, <laughs> I know how some of those those dudes feel. Nice, that's that's good to hear. Yeah, are you more of a fan of the shorter rounds, two two and a half minutes? Yeah, I yeah. um I like two minutes flat. I think that the, those old grind time one minute rounds was too short. But then again, we had like fifty battles at one event. Yep. <laughs> so it made sense, and um I think. Three minutes, I think three minutes for a highly anticipated battle like Lux and Hollow or like, you know, certain matchups like Past Day and Hollow Hand and, and like certain ones that I can remember in the history of battle rap that were highly anticipated or had a story behind them. I get it and I understand. I really don't want to hear anybody go over three minutes, just in my personal opinion. Yeah. But I think for That's something like this, short and sweet. And you know, you know, it's funny, the biggest thing to me about unlimited time or like three to five minute round is once you rap and have a battle with somebody for an hour, an hour and a half long, it's like leaves no room for a re- for a rematch. Like any of these guys in this tournament, if it's a close battle and some controversy, you could potentially set up a rematch and you don't feel like they've said all the material they could possibly say to each other. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, rematches and battle rap usually don't work out. That's like... Uh, Chilla and Real Deal. Their battles worked out to be all right, but they're just too close together for me. Even last weekend when we thought, you know, everyone thought before the judge's decision came in that Frack won that battle against Disaster, and he would have been going against Thesaurus. Him and Thesaurus just battled last November. So I was like, you know, I'm not going to bitch right. and moan. That's that's not a huge problem to have, but at the same time, I was like, ah, we right. just heard this. And Frack is not going right. to come up with another Christopher Columbus scheme, right? Like, we're not going to see that right. recreated. It, it just loses it. Uh, that's like... um. People have talked before, but they want to see Pat and Sharon again because Sharon, uh, you know, kind of got screwed around or whatever in his third for that battle. I really don't have any interest because right. I think they were like five minute rounds or some shit. That's a half hour material. There's not a lot you're going to still say rounds. to each other. I think they were. Yeah, I'm I was not on sure. stage for that one. I think I had to pee. My legs started hurting. <laughs> I was enjoying the battle, but I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, you, you and Organic have always had a good relationship. I've seen you at many a KOTD events. Right. I yeah. first time I met Organic was at Battle of the Bay Five when uh conceded Battle Arsenal. Wow. That is a had, long I time ago. Him. Yeah, I had known him since the jump off WRC. We like we kinda all knew each other from online. 
Yeah. Around like oh five, oh six. I met mm-hmm. him in like it was Battle of the Bay, like twenty ten. Yeah, at and, least uh, we've always had a relationship since. I mean with this, in this battle rap shit, like, you know, some of these guys in battle rap were my friends before battle rap, then they went to a league, they became this guy's friend. So we all know each other and we all know Yeah, it's a small community. Other, so yeah. yeah it, it's a small community and uh, word travels fast, who's a good guy, who's a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, so, this 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 thing right here is long overdue. There's so much crazy shit going on in battle rap that we, it's cool to kind of form form a team and make so much noise. Do something yeah. that's big. Yeah, that's what's really neat about it. It's something different, but it's not... You know when somebody tries to go too much against the grain and it just does not work at all? Like, I hate yeah. when that happens, right? It's, just, it, and it's not that they have ill intentions going into it, but they just think like, well, you know what? I'm going to do it different than fucking Smack or Grind Time or KOTD and all these people, and I'm going to do it better. And they do everything different, and it's it fucks it up. But I love how KOTD comes together with these things, these tournaments, the blackouts, all that shit. They always have these novelty ideas that work really well. Yeah, I love the creativity. Like, I think when you're a creative person and, um, you know, you, this is a business at the end of the day, but when you put your creative energy into something and you see it return back to you, it's a different feeling you get from just doing the same old uniform stuff over and over again. So it's definitely rewarding. Yeah, and uh, when you started to grind time and everything, there was no roadmap for this. There's a, you know, sort of one now. Like we said, people try to go against the grain and stuff, but where did what sparked the idea what like you know what did you what the hell were you thinking basically when you got into this because like um, i said there's no blueprint there's no college course there's no online course you can take in how to be a battle rap promoter especially what like late 2000s right. was well, it's, it's, it's three things that sparked it one i was in the wic's and after the tapes went missing and all that controversy happened yeah yeah um they kind of went under so um i was like where are we gonna battle and then we had met, you know, I met Disaster, I met the Source, uh, all these people through this. And plus, I was living in Orlando at the time, and we had guys like uh, Johnny Storm and Madness and Mad Hills, and then we knew the guys in Florida, like Parable and stuff. And we were like, what the hell are we going to do now? You know what I'm saying? We got all this momentum. There's clearly a fan base. So I already was like, you know, maybe I should have people battle. Then... I saw, um, you guys familiar with the Elements League, where Pat yep. Day came from? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nova Scotia? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I used to um, watch the Elements League, and I would, like, write breakdowns. I'll try to find one if I can and send it to you guys. I would write, I, I used to write these breakdowns and, like, rank all the guys in the Elements League with, like, these detailed, like, breakdowns of the battles and stuff like that and the lines and why this guy's ranked here and there. So I got cool with those guys. And, um... I saw that they would they would do these events with multiple battles on a card, like boxing matches, and they would do them in a ring. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I saw like an organized like battle rap league. And I was like, oh shit, this is a great idea. Like, imagine if I could get guys that I know are dope in the U.S. Mm-hmm. doing this. And then the other thing was, so it was a Canadian I had idea. This dream. What did you say? It was a Canadian idea. Yeah. Right. The, whole, the whole organized, <laughs> oh boy, the whole organized <laughs> league with uh multiple battles in a day. I definitely give the Elements League credit for that. Yeah. Um. I'd but as a whole the biggest thing. That. Yeah. 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 Sorry, exactly. Go. Pat had it, and I want to say that maybe Scott had, had something like that to Clips. Pat and who? Sorry. Um, Shadi Horror. He had. I think he had a little spiel about it when he battled Charlie Cliffs and then Pat Day and Hollow Hands. Yeah, yeah Hollow Hands was the big breakdown for sure. Yeah, that was right. that was amazing. Yeah, Pat did a really but, um, a crazy job of that. I wish he was in this tournament. Sorry, good Jack. Tell me to keep cutting you off. Carry on. Oh no, no, it's cool. It's cool. But um, I wanted to tell you guys that the funniest part and the, the third thing why I was so inspired to like make this battle rap collective a league <laughs> was because. I would watch Fight Club at the time. And I would watch <laughs> all these dudes from the streets battling, and I would see Reed Dollars, and, you know, then you got the DVDs with Murder Mook and all these guys on them. But mm-hmm. then I would watch Scribble Jam, and I'd see, like, The Source and Iron Solomon, and I'd be like, how crazy would it be 
if these dudes battled each other and the dudes with all the street content were forced to freestyle and like say funny shit and then all these guys that you see as backpackers and goofy guys jumping around the stage if they're forced to get more serious i wonder what that would look like and so when we started grind time it was like reaching out to people from both worlds and clashing them together and i think that's what made it so unique in the beginning and like kind of laid the blueprint for a lot of shit that we see today what was the money like low i assume did you did you pay for travel then or did battlers have to pay for their own travel um in the beginning oh everybody was paying for their own shit yeah yeah it's just a labor of love type thing yeah there was a lot of couch surfing back then we all slept (laughs) on on 18 (laughs) couches a year um then you know once it started generating interest you gotta remember also like YouTube wasn't monetized back then. Yep. You know what I mean? YouTube was just starting to become a platform that people would go to to see funny videos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or viral videos. I only We didn't even refer to them as viral videos back then. Nope. <laughs> so it was kind of the, the platform I chose because I saw other stuff on YouTube. You know what I mean? And um, the monetization didn't come out till like years later after we were already rolling. So... It was such a passion project because we didn't know how we, that we want how we were gonna monetize it at first, but at the same time, like we were all trying to blow this thing up, you know. So it was definitely an afterthought in the very beginning. So, question um, to go back a, a couple minutes here. I also lived in Orlando mm-hmm. for almost a decade, but probably not <laughs> when you were there. <laughs> um, oh, it's cool. No, it's not cool. It's hot as shit. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, yeah, and the, bug, the bugs are big as shit, too. Dude, it's like a fucking living... Bugs. It's like Jurassic Park down there, man. <laughs> uh, I've been in Orlando for a month, too. I know what it's like. It's, it is the lizards and the mosquitoes and the shit. Uh, I'll stay up here with the snow. Yeah, right. Mosquitoes are oh, terrible. Oh, Mr. Snow. Um, okay, but anyway. <laughs> no, so my question actually was... You know, you mentioned when earlier when we were talking about, you know, all the judging and the 10-9, 10-8, whatever. Uh, you know, me and Jason come from a podcasting background of MMA, so kind of the same judging system. Um, oh, yeah, cool. So do you feel like promoting battle rap, like, you know, Jason was just asking about, like, how you got started and, and how you felt promoting it, how you laid out the groundwork for yourself. Do you feel like doing that is similar or was similar at some point to promoting, like, 1999 2000 UFC or boxing forever ago like do you feel like it's the same type of thing if you follow either of those things like a Dana White kind of 1999 thing I do and so some people don't agree but the crazy thing about you asking me that is I did a case study on battle rap and I was finding parallels between the battle universe and other universes before like sponsors came in or you know somebody bought it out and it fixed everything that was wrong with it I cleaned it up and the biggest parallel I drew between what we're doing is was right. MMA of course yep. you know with the inception of the UFC and I was watching all the stuff when like Hoist Gracie and stuff like that and how they started uh promoting things in the beginning, beginning and had was it UFC one where they had Hoist Gracie and like Shamrock and like yep. everybody was there was like a bunch of crazy injuries and stuff <laughs> yep. like that. Yep. Yeah. So I, I learned about that stuff, and then the other universe, believe it or not, was uh, skateboarding. Because what I found out about skateboarding okay. was that Nike tried to Nike has a brand called SB, which I'm sure you guys have heard of, and uh, they tried to jump into skateboarding, and nobody in the skateboarding community was buying into it. Like it wasn't cool at all. They kind of boycotted it. And uh-huh. They had to get together with people in the skateboarding community. And they had to design products, shoes, and they kind of just had to, like, find out what was going on in there. And they were able to create the Nike SB brand by, you know, jumping into the minds of some, like, you know, retired skateboarders and stuff like that. Then they signed this guy, Paul Rodriguez, who was, like, the youngest, best skateboarder out. They, they, put the, they signed him to this big deal, put together a brand with him, and then, like, the whole thing blew up. So what that taught me is that, like, can't just skip over um, the innovators and people that have been part of a grassroots movement to monetize it. Like, if you want to get the most out of it, you got to find a way to work together. And I was like, man, like, this reminds me of Battle Rap so much because we have to find a way to make these big companies 
work with us on our terms. You know, and so, I kind of feel like that's what's going on right now. Well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, right now, present day versus, you know, UFC 20 years ago, right? But, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but that being said, two questions. <laughs> One, and you can only answer with a yes or no. Are you or are you not okay, cool. in that in that case? You're talking about grind time. You know, you're talking about how you started, what you did. Are you or are you not the Dana White of Battle Rep? Oh. Oh. Oh, shit. That's tough, um, eh? I'll say. I'll make I'll it say easy. No. Are, are you the first I'll say no. Dana of Battle Rap? Maybe not the current Am Dana I? White. Yeah, you can say that. All right. My second question is, case study, <laughs> so were you, what, case study for, like, you were doing business research or college? Like, what are you doing case studies for? All right. I can't say names, but I'll tell you this. So I do uh, digital marketing and brand management <laughs> uh, in my other life. Same. And, um, <laughs> I was at, so, yeah, you're going to know where I'm going with this. So I, I was at a battle, and a celebrity came up to me. And I was like, holy shit, it's blank. And he goes, hey, man, um, look at this event and tell me everything that's wrong with it. And me and him just started having a conversation about, like, business and branding and things that should be done. He's like, hey, man, you're pretty smart. Um, you think you could put together a case study for me on Battle Rap? And then we could start talking about some business. I did it. I sent it to him. Uh, he loved it. Uh, us working together has been pending, but yeah, it's a pretty big celebrity and he uh, watches all type of battle rap and I don't think people even know about that. The funny thing is that event we were at, people saw him, but they weren't really paying attention to him because there were so many things going on at the event. So he kind of just talked to me and left early. I know GZ uh, watches a lot of battle rap, man. You're going to you're gonna stir some <laughs> shit up here. <laughs> you don't think I'm yeah, um, yeah. after this, then... It definitely was not Jay Z, <laughs> but it definitely was the rock. That's that, that's that's really interesting because I know I, I watched a couple of your inter- of your interviews, uh, kind of getting ready for the show and everything, and uh, I've seen how you express your ideas on battle rap and how you trying to make make sure that the uh, everybody gets theirs right, that the artist gets fed and the and the and the thing keeps growing, and it seems like you're, you you got it, you you got the right idea. So I really hope that it works out with yeah. that celebrity of yours. You know what I mean? Because if if anybody should do it, it should be you, I think. Hmm. No, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. No, I because I guess I, I, I've spent like two hours watching your interviews before the show. You know what I mean? And uh, the, the the ideas and the way the way the, the passion that you have and the and the way you present it, it seems seems to be on point. Like if you know what I mean? If that's what I'm saying. If I see if I'd like I to see somebody carry it, I should probably see like to see you do it. Mm-hmm. Into a big you, into man. a big. I appreciate big, that a lot. It's the first yeah. day in a white. Let's see. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. You got a new thing to add to <laughs> your so, tour bio. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to take a battle again. You're gonna you're gonna take a battle so you can yell that out in your intro. The first dude only to battle rap, oh, yeah. motherfuckers. Uh, no, I actually, would, I would ba- I would battle again in the right in the right situation. Oh, for real? Hey, you can't get to my yeah. question before I do, dude. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go All ahead. right, so let's go back two questions. I got a different one, and we're gonna pretend like you never said that. Um, no, I didn't. Okay. Say what? Say what? Right. All right. Um, no, my, <laughs> you know, digital marketing and all that. You, know, I said, oh, same. Uh, I've been in social media a long time, and I can't help but notice, right now, mm-hmm. today, this moment, two hours ago, six hours ago, ten hours ago, if somebody were to go pull up your Twitter profile, it comes uh, up as temporarily restricted. Why is that? What did you post? I mean, it's still there. You can click yes, let me view the profile. You're not suspended. But, like, why are you mm-hmm. temporarily restricted? First of all, I have an answer for you. I have an answer that's <laughs> not really an answer, but it's an answer. <laughs> so, um, I, if you guys notice, it, it's so funny that even though I'm in this, like, digital marketing world, I don't post a lot. And um, with this tournament, and I've kind of been thinking about it for a while, like, I just start posting more. I'm going to start posting more pictures on Instagram tweeting more often so today i just woke up and i was on one tweeting 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 and um honestly i don't know what happened i just logged in on my phone and it said there's been suspicious activity reset your password i reset my password then i had an email that said uh 
your profile was doing weird stuff and we're trying to get to the bottom of it. And they put a temporary, they put like a soft band on it. So I was no, on they, they thought, on my, they thought you, my phone at the same time. They, got, they thought you got broken into and it's just because if, if your account is not usually that active and you started posting shit one after another, they thought you had got hacked or something. That's what it is. It's just yeah, a, today was the most active I've been on my Twitter in like a year. So I can see why they'd be like, what the hell? Somebody broke in and yeah, 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 that's what it is. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I was like, I don't normally care this much, but like, let me go ahead and look at his replies and his likes and his follows. Like, what I- What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was just posting about the judging and, and uh, a bunch of shit about the tournament. Mm. And uh, I was just no, it was definitely... and liking a bunch of people. But yeah. Yeah. I definitely didn't. I didn't. Um, anything racist or diss any communities or, or break any of the guideline rules so I hope they let me out of jail. There's a lot of rules these days though. A lot. Yeah, I <laughs> well I mean you, you were right. talking about like you said battles and judging and, and since we're going to pretend like you didn't say the shit you just said that's a good segue <laughs> into battling and would you ever battle again? <laughs> uh, yeah I would if, if the situation was right. I know like I'm really a laid back person like I'm not I'm not the most serious person in the world. You know, when it's time to to do business and kind of, like, strap in, I get more serious. But just on, like, the day-to-day, like, it's not the end of the world to me. Like, you win a battle, you lose a battle, whatever. But, like, at the end of the day, I am a battle rapper at heart. And, like, it, it's just so funny that, like, I was just saying I don't post a lot and stuff like that, so you guys wouldn't know. But mm-hmm. I am the most, like, annoying Walking around around the house, freestyling, never shut up, rapping person. <laughs> you need to go pro in the world. I walk, I wake up rapping. I walk up to people. I rap. I go to the grocery store. I rap about what's in the aisles. It's hilarious that nobody would know that unless you just knew me personally. So <laughs> yeah, I'm like, my life is a bar. So I, I, I'm I'm prepared right now to uh, battle anybody who who wants it. But yeah, if it was gonna be like a promoted thing on a card, I'd do it. That's that's the title of the D-Rec book right there. My life is a bar. <laughs> right, Look at this. We're setting up hey, battles for you. We're hey. setting up books for you. Right. You know what? Look, you don't even have to come back on. I mean, you have to come back on. But you don't have to come back on if you just want to walk around and record yourself for a hot minute and send us the video. You know, you know what's funny? Is that maybe I could do that, but I'm notorious for calling my friends and when they don't pick up, leaving like, Five minute. Oh, you're a dick. <laughs> you're an asshole. So, if I can find some of those, I'll send them to you guys. Dope. <laughs> so, for right, right, to, right situation to get you to come back in battle, what would it have to be? The the opponent, the money, like what? What are some of the big factors? Mm. And it, it, I would say the opponent, but not like. I'm not like, oh, I got a battle loaded look. That's not what I mean by that. It has to make sense because I'm a very self-aware person. And, like, even if you were paying me a whole bunch of money and have me battle a big name, if it didn't make sense, I'd be like, people don't want to see this. You know what I mean? It has to be one of those things that when you hear it, people are like, oh, shit, I would want to see that. Yeah, if you battle organic or something. I don't think there's anything like that. Oh my God! Yes, battle organic. That's, that's you know what's what funny. There, 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 there was there was a time where I thought me and organic should do it, but I think he's like so into the business of battle rap now and so far removed from battling. And now that we're working together, I mean, it would be, it would be weird if we tried to do that right now. But me and organic could go against some people, and so I do. Yeah, I'm telling you, half halftime show in the in the GP finale halftime show two on two you and Poison Pen versus Organic and Lush. See, see oh the things God. we're setting up That'd over here. Have the captains battle, yeah. Uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! Could you imagine the fucking internet would explode? That no, would that'd be, be that'd be funny as shit. That would be crazy. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna hold my breath, but <laughs> um, the only thing that would be crazier would be if it was a compliment battle. Yeah, we could do that. We could we could probably pull that one off. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I wanted to ask you when you said this, though. You said you're pretty laid back and pretty chill. Don't you feel like mm-hmm. you, not, not that you try to be. I mean, I'm sure you just are how you are. But, like, I feel like that's kind of a prerequisite for being a promoter 
an innovator, a battler, like you can't let things get, you know, you can't be type A all the time. You'd have a fucking stroke, right? <laughs> well, look at the, well, look at disaster. Like I said. <laughs> you, and you're not walking around wearing a fucking bulletproof vest to a battle in a fucking bunker with 10 people in it, now are you? Nah, but you, you know what's funny about that, though? If I, I've never really done a battle, like maybe one a long time ago, but like, you guys were talking about like the friendly battle with like organic and poison pen. I would love to battle someone I really don't like. Because then I get to get in that I hate you character. And that's not something I normally do. That's a pretty exciting thought to me. <laughs> so can you, would you tell us who that would be? I was about to ask the same thing, yes. Yeah. Who would you like to I battle? I hate too many people. Maybe I have to <laughs> wait for someone to do something to me and then you guys will know I'll probably battle them the next day. But, um... <laughs> I don't got that much hate for anybody right now. Competitively, I can get into that mode. You know what I'm saying? But, like, for instance, like, if I knew I was battling somebody who pushes their opponent and yells in their face and grabs their pockets and stuff like that, then you have to get in that mode. But, like, you know, it's, I'm not going to go battle Carter Deem to pretend to be fake mad or anything like that for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't get mad at Carter Deems. Aw, his poor yeah, but Yeah, I, Carter Deems is the man. Yeah, yeah, I love the way Head Ice came at him because te- uh, Carter that was a good such battle. a such a unique guy to go at, right? And uh, I right. love the way Head Ice came at him was just not playing any of his bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was a ton of fun. I love that battle. Um, Sharon told me once that Car- he thinks Carter Deems would be his most difficult matchup because he doesn't know how, what angle he'd approach it at. Yeah, um, I can see that. And I. You know, the- Funny thing about that is that Sharon is one of those people that's also hard to prepare for mm-hmm. because you've heard every angle against him. And it's mm-hmm. like you kind of just, it's like when he got on Wild and Out, people were like, thank God, now I have a new angle. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But I think that's why Sharon's so effective because he's hard to prepare for. But yeah, Carter, he's, you just got to talk Carter versus A Ward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think A Ward is one of the best writers in battle rap. Mm-hmm. And I was just like shocked that he came up with that much material to say about Carter Dean. Like he reached deep for that stuff. I appreciated it though. <laughs> <laughs> um, Carter, uh, when Carter got Ilmac, with always wanted to give a Noma high five. That is one of my favorite moments in battle. Favorite rap. moments, absolutely. Mm. In the that pocket was... checks, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. Mm. Side note, I saw multiple people complaining about Cheddar not being in the Grand Prix, and I was like, I I don't not like the guy, but, like, is that anybody's first pick? Uh, I think Cheddar... Okay, so when I was introduced to Cheddar, around the time he battled... Come on. Who, who did he battle? I don't know. He had this hilarious... Ba- Maybe it was Carter Deems and Cheddar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. I met Cheddar that I've known him online before that, but I met him that day. And he was a strip club DJ. It was like it was like so amazing to everybody that like he had this secret career playing hip hop in the strip club underground somewhere. And uh he um I know he just really started focusing heavy on his music career. I even saw a couple posts that it seems like he's taking it real serious. And he just wasn't someone who battled all the time anyway. So I think that you know, maybe he maybe he's just on another path right now. Yeah, I mean, look, I haven't heard it. I haven't heard that name in quite some time, frankly. Um, so I always wonder, though, like you know, the thing is, and you even hear this in battles. You even heard this last weekend when you were watching. You know that it's a hobby or it's a side thing. So you know, you you can't, especially during COVID, make a living or even really a name at this point doing this. So. Even before COVID, right. same thing, but to a lesser Unless degree. Unless you're frack. Well, uh-huh. <laughs> you know what? Light, lightning struck for frack in every single way possible. That's the beauty week. about it. That's the beauty about a tournament like this because you can you can have a guy that you did not expect to just kill it, right? And mm-hmm. just you know what I mean. And then mm-hmm. uh, a guy like Diz just not coming prepared enough because he wasn't he you know what I mean? He just underestimated the guy or whatever 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 happened in that moment but that was a good moment um i was also going to ask since we're talking about different styles in Carter Dean and and, and uh, uh last time we had uh, we had a pretty credible dude on that was nameless and uh i asked mm-hmm. him i asked him what would you what would he think about um 
uh, industry Don't rappers, in, industry <laughs> rappers who, who, who's been who's been who's been doing battle rap, but on wax, right? Do you think there's any any people that could cross over and be somewhat successful? I'm not talking about coming in and holding the belt. I'm talking about coming in and doing decent. Uh. We we brought yeah, up we Banks next this. time. We brought up Banks last time, and uh, Nameless said it, he wants to battle him for five thousand American yeah, dollars. He said it will fucking roast <laughs> Floyd Banks for five grand American. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, Krill's a. Krill. I, I'm just want I, I, like I come from a completely different. You know what I mean? I, I've I've been involved in battle rap, but on a completely different scale, and uh, not scale, but a completely different branch, format, I guess. Yeah. Format. Yeah. We we. We hosted battles where thousands of MCs were involved, but they were sending in songs to a given topic and a given length. You know what I mean? And then they, the songs oh, were judged. You. you know what I mean? So it was an offline battle more. You know what I mean? So we were judging exactly. songs and stuff like that. So I was thinking because a lot of that material was battle material, right? There were hard bars going at your mm -hmm. opponent, going at everybody in the tournament, whatever the fuck it is, right? So I was thinking the, the, uh, those guys that did that are in verses right now. I'm sure you heard of verses, right? In yeah. Russia? Right, so that's that's where I'm from, right? So a lot of a lot of guys that did that on Vax crossed over to verses and did very, very, very well. They killed it, right? So what I'm saying is, um, I'm not sure how do, how would they do at making hit songs, but I could I've seen people make good rap, battle rap music and cross over to verses mm -hmm. and do awesome. You know what I mean? And I think that Banks, if he crossed over, would have done decent. I'm not saying he's gonna come in and just murder everybody, but I'm saying <laughs> he would have. You know right. what I mean? He would he, he would do decent, I think. And what what is your opinion on that? Um, I'm more optimistic when it comes to because I really don't want to see anyone do bad. Like, for instance, when cannabis battled disaster, uh, I was yeah. like, that was brutal. My mind couldn't see cannabis doing what he did. Yep. You know what I mean? And I, but I think that was my reality check. Uh, I, but apparently, I'm cannabis got locked up and say, broke his arm and all kinds of shit because th th that will throw you off a little bit. So yeah. that gives him a little bit, a little bit of an edge uh, on that one. But thirty still... pages of rhymes. <laughs> right. Say. <laughs> go, go on, but, even, but even like. I'm trying to think of somebody right now. All right, so for instance, are you guys familiar with Griselda? Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Yep. I think Conway would be really good. For real? You think so? Yeah, I think Conway would be dope. Huh. Um, let me never think. thought about any of those Bank? guys. Yeah, I think Conway would be good. Um, man, we talk about this all the time. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see like who I usually end up arguing with my friends over. With. <laughs> I think some of the old, I think some of the older guys, like for instance, I think there would have been a time where Little Wayne would have been incredible, but I think now he's really? kind of like wow, what? That yeah, one's really I think awesome. I'm a Wayne fan, like, but I'm not. I was not expecting that. No, I was thinking like oh six, oh seven. Wayne Wayne would be really good in a battle. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to see him now. Um, damn. Let me think. It's so funny because I thought, like, we had the ultimate example with Cassidy, right? Yeah. But we and he, did, how, he like, did well in a disaster battle, at least in the one that was recorded. I don't know the conspiracy behind it. I just seen what was recorded the first battle, and I think he did very well. Right, right. Right? Um, right. But then I, I don't know what happened. I was a fan of his battle, with, his battle with Arsenal. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, I don't think Banks would do the same thing. I think Banks would be good. Yeah? I think... um. The way I'm, the reason he, Banks was brought up is because he was saying something like that on Twitter, and my opinion on it, they were G Unit came out saying I'm a soldier, the whole fucking, you know what I mean, through yeah, every record. Every, yeah. They yeah. just every song was either this record or just this record to to him, to, to yeah. the person that don't yeah, exist yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, now now you're right, but but you know what? It's hard to gauge with these guys because like, you guys remember when Cassidy was supposed to battle Mook like way back yep. in the day, like ten years ago. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I think then Cassidy, it would have just been incredible. You know what I'm mm. saying? But now Cassidy now, he's probably in a different mind state, different place in his life. It just doesn't come off the same way. So my problem with Lloyd Banks is even though I think he can do it, I wonder if mentally he's at a place where he'd be able to like pull off the performance and do everything crisp and properly. You know mm. what I mean? Another That's one. That's why I think maybe. Oh. No, go Sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. I thought you were done. Oh, no, I was just going to say, that's why I think maybe some of, like, this is why I said Conway, maybe some of the newer MCs that are way more hungry, that are just getting their feet wet in the game right now, will be able to cross over to a battle and still keep that hunger, you know what I'm saying, in the back of their voice when they do it. Mm -hmm. 
That's a good answer. That's a great answer. I'm satisfied. <laughs> I'm so satisfied. <laughs> I'm satisfied. <laughs> satisfied <with my laughs> fucking fry bag. His eyes are barely open. <laughs> fucking. Uh, You've gotten the seal of approval. Oh, uh, Na- Namus brought up uh, <laughs> the Mook and uh, Drake battle that almost happened in, in Toronto. And Namus said that people would have been very surprised. Like, uh, he said not even, not only would Drake have been competitive, he may have beat Mook. Uh, I fucking have a hard time swallowing that. Did, what do you think about okay. that? Like, okay, this, I, I will this, tell you this. this topic. When, when, yep. when you asked me that question, I should have said Drake. Right? For real. And I and I and I yeah, and I'll tell and I'll tell you something about Drake. I think that because Drake is so good at making popular music, mm-hmm. sometimes people overlook some of the stuff that he says. And I think he's so popular because he has a way of connecting um, you know, and and, and and some of his more like emotional tracks and stuff. Like that, he ha- he has a way with words. He can say something. He'd be like, "Damn, I was just thinking that." But sure. when I saw him battle Pusha T, right? So even though I, I uh, I knew Pusha T won the battle, his first yeah. track was dope. And then the shit he said against Meek Mill, when he said, "Um, I'll uh, give him the Meek Mill one tour. for sure." Yeah, that that whole line, like, is that a world tour? Your girls tour the same way? Yeah, you yeah. To open up. I said yeah. to myself, that is a top tier battle rap line. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, if he can craft lines like that, back-to-back, he can battle rap. Hmm. You know what I mean? That's a battle record. And, and you, know what's, you know what's funny? <laughs> uh, me. Two, two other people that I should have mentioned, uh, Tory Lanez and um, Brennan oh, Lucas. Boy. I think they could battle as well. Lucas, and I, know, I know Tory Lanez just did all this crazy <laughs> shit, but I think he could battle. <laughs> He's living that battle rap bar. Yeah, no yeah. shit. All right, uh, direct. I could sit here and talk to you about battle rap for probably a week, fucking straight. But we've taken up enough of your time tonight. <laughs> um, well, are we missing on anything here you want to touch on before we get out? Any uh, things you want to, you know, get out there? Anything besides the GP stuff you got going on? Um, really, I mean, we're all focused on this tournament right now. So yeah. I just say make sure you tune in to the KOTD uh, Grand Prix uh, Self Division coming up next. I think we're going to surprise a lot of people as far as how competitive it's going to be. Like, these dudes are incredibly hungry. And um, I want you guys, when you, when you, watch, when you watch it on Sunday, mm-hmm. I'm going to have some dope shit at home. And I want you guys to see it. Okay. When you see it, hit me up. Okay. Hit me up, and I'll hook you guys up. Okay. Oh, shit. We're, we're, we're having a podcast yeah. right after it, right? We're going we're gonna to go over it. Yeah, yeah. We'll be doing a recap show immediately after the event. We're going to be doing one every Sunday. Um, Right after the event, all three of us ready to go. But yeah, definitely, we'll hit you up. Um, all right, I guess I can wrap Sounds here. Sounds good. Uh, direct. Um, can you just hang on for a second after we wrap? Uh, Amy has something to ask you real quick. So that's all right. Sure. And I and uh, before I go, I want to tell you guys this. Right. I appreciate you guys for having personality, being funny, and just having a good time in this podcast. Because I hate doing dry ass interviews. So, <laughs> we appreciate the hell out of that. Bro, the whole point of the show is yeah, just no to sit around and shoot the shit. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you guys have really good chemistry, too. You don't talk over each other and stuff. I like that. You know what? I don't, Jason, I don't even think I told you this. I have had two other people tell me the exact same thing in the last two days. So high five to all of us. And thank you, Derek. Yeah, yeah. Name the same thing. Thanks for taking all time to talk to us, man. I appreciate it. Very much so. And we'll definitely have you on again throughout the uh, the GP. All right. So make sure you tune in Sunday on Twitch to watch KT. Uh, Grand Prix continue. The South Division's up next, led by our man Direct. Make sure you follow the show at the Building DT for Direct. Amy Krill Kasatsky. I'm Jay Kelly. We out. Peace. Peace out. Building downtown. Building downtown. Building downtown. Building downtown.